All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into Rowan Athletics coverage of Profs Men's Basketball here inside SB Gymnasium on the beautiful campus of Rowan University. I'm Mark Etchtelli alongside my broadcast partner, Joe Stauffenberg. And right now the Profs 3-3 three and three on the year coming into this game, 2-1 and one in the conference. Meanwhile, Stockton 5-2 and two record, undefeated in the conference, a conference record of 3-0, and oh, and they also went on a three-game win streak. Now the Profs, second best offense in the entire conference, averaging just under 86 points per game. Meanwhile, Stockton, sixth best, averaging just under 77 points per game. Defense is where the Profs have struggled so far this season, averaging, giving up about 84 points per game. Stockton has excelled on the defensive side of the ball, averaging only giving up just about 73 points per game. And Jerry Price, the leading point getter for the Profs, leads the team in average points per game with 15.8. That ranks 12th in the end, Jack. For the Stockton University Ospreys, it's Keon Flanders, 14.6 points per game as he leads the team. And we're getting ready with the starting lineups for both teams. And we'll start things off with the Stockton University Ospreys as Keon Flanders, Cadian Dawkins, Steve Faraby, Luciano Lubrano, and Othniel Niamekye. The five starters for the Stockton University Ospreys. And Stockton, as I mentioned, five and two on the year, undefeated in the conference. Take a look at the current NJAC standing. Stockton sitting in second place, actually tied for first with Montclair State. Both teams five and two overall and three and zero oh in the NJAC. Meanwhile, the Profs, they find themselves towards the middle of the pack in the conference. They're ranked seventh out of 10 teams in the NJAC standings, one and two in the NJAC with a record of three and three. A little bit underwhelming from what they were expected to be this year. Granted, they did lose a lot of key pieces. And Joe, however, those key pieces have been filled by transfers such as Jerry Price and Malik Sanders. Oh, absolutely. They haven't really, they haven't disappointed too. One of the things is that, you know, you lose basically your whole entire starting lineup. You think, man, what is this team gonna be? You know, they've, they've really stepped up their game. Especially Jerry Price, you look at him, he's leading the team. He wasn't here last year. These guys have gelled very, very quickly. They looked very comfortable on the court. And I think that's the reason that they're gonna go really far in the conference. The starting lineup for your own university profs. Jerry Price at guard along with Connor Dickerson, Malik Sanders, and Austin Carney at the forward positions and rounding out the lineup. Deontay Bob, the big man underneath the basket, the 6'9 senior out of Mount Holly, New Jersey. And Joe, he has been dominant on the boards for the Profs, gaining a number of rebounds per game, but he's been even better on the defensive side of the ball, second in the NJAC in blocks. You also have to look at his offense, too. First in the conference at almost 77%. The ability to get down low is crucial, and you know he's going to be facing you know, bigger guys you know, for both sides of the court. Um, and, and, you know, any of those guys that are on your screen, they're going to take him hard. But the thing is, he doesn't phase it really at all. He just goes in, does his thing, and then gets to the other side of the court. It's same thing with Malik Sanders, too. He's, you know, really a stretch forward, you know, forward into a guard. He can also play that center position, but can also stretch it out, too. He's got a lot of length to him. And again, you know, this team is, is very versatile, does a lot. You know, you have guys like Connor Dickerson who can also, you know, play the four. It's tremendous to, to, to see different guys step up in different positions and still being able to produce. Well, so far, Joe, this season has been all about stepping up and filling the shoes of a lot of departing seniors that left last year. You think about the DePersia twins, Rob and Nick, Ramon Wright as well as Duran Curry. That's four out of the five starters. And right now the props three and three, maybe not where they wanted or were expected to be, but they've certainly just run the course. And they're gonna look to improve here tonight as Deontay Ba goes up for the tip and wins it over top of Steve Faraby. Jerry Price with the ball for Rowan to start things off. It's Connor Dickerson. Right-handed dribble, kicks out to Carney, fakes the three, drives in now, pass underneath to Ba, tries to put a shot up, gets blocked away. Rebound, streaking down the court, it's Flanders. And he'll stop up and give it to Faraby, who then shuffles the ball over to Dawkins. Katie and Dawkins, the sophomore out of East Hampton, New Jersey, hands it off. 
to his man in Keon Flanders, the Ospreys leading point getter on the season. Jumper from the top of the arc, no good. Rebound brought down by Niemeke. Kicked out. Ospreys another jumper, this one from the free throw line, it's knocked down. Luciano Lubrano. Carney. Driving in, layup, no good. Rebound brought down by Bob, but a foul was called on the play. And Austin Carney, he'll head to the line to shoot two. Carney is, is such a big key for this Profs team. Uh, you know, going inside, going outside. Big, you know, team effort last game. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with the win, but... Carney, double-double, 13 points, 10 rebounds. Got to get him going early. I think when you go get him going behind the, the three-point arc, that's going to open things up so much more for not only for you know, him, but for the rest of his guys, the rest of the teammates. Well, Carney able to knock down one of two as Price spills to the floor. Three-pointer from Farabee, rims in and out, no good. Lebrano gets the putback, and... Another basket for the Ospreys. Now you gotta have that offensive board, or at least for them, it's you know be the defensive rebound. That gave them an opportunity, we saw with the women's team, of how they got so many offensive rebounds and were able to put it in for scores. Exactly what Stockton is doing early. Well, Carney gets stripped, long three from the corner, knocked down. That's Keon Flanders, the sophomore guard, and already head coach Joe Crispin calls a timeout and he has some words for so many Austin Carney, who's going to come out of the game, it looks like. we're able to put well, it in Carney, for scores. I mean, exactly what stopped him after early. the steal. Carney gets stripped, Fakes long three the from three, the corner, knocked the down. And then That's Keon. It. It's a good foul, or it's a, it's a good timeout. Now, you know, stopping a little bit of a run that Stockton had, had gone on. And coming out of the timeout, we're going to send it courtside with our sideline reporter, Kayla Santiago. Kayla, what Coach Crispin have to say over the timeout? And it seems to have some technical difficulties. So we'll try and get to Kayla at the next stoppage if we can get things figured out. But until then... Back to basketball as Jerry Price pulls up from three with a hand in his face. No good. Rebound. Dickerson can't get there. Loose ball out of bounds, and it deflects off the Ospreys last. Appeared to be last touched by Keon Flanders. It'll be Prowse ball. Still 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Dickerson will inbound for the Profs. Currently down 7-1 after a slow start. Jerry Price, the transfer guard. Guarded up top, driving in, right-handed layup off the glass, no good. Rebound brought down, and now loose ball rolls out of bounds. It'll stay with Rowan in the offensive end. For Rowan, this isn't a must-win game, but this is a game that is, is going to be very key when it comes down to the end of the season because you know you always want to play from you know ahead not behind you fall to one and three in the conference just put yourself further down and and you don't want to play that way the turnover from Tariq Baker who just checked in for the Ospreys came in to take out Faraby Dickerson kicks it out to Price. Thought about the three, but then decided to dribble around, find Sanders. Sanders driving baseline, kicks it out to the corner. Good ball move from the props as Dickerson now out to Price. Fakes the three, drives in, underhanded layup. Couldn't get it to go in, but the putback up and good by Austin Carney. You're going to credit that bucket to Bob, but it looked like it was just a, a quick tip. You know, the ability to get up there and Make sure to just get it in. A steal from Jerry Price. Bucket in transition going the other way. He had Dawkins all over him, but it didn't matter. Bit of a height disadvantage in that matchup for Price. 5-7 going up against Katie and Dawkins. 
6-1. And the Profs will get possession after that whistle. So you can finally start getting some momentum your way. Couple of buckets, including this one. Great steal there by Jerry Price. Little push to get some space, but you know, obviously wasn't too much to get a foul called on him. Carney to Price in the corner. Profs rotating around the top of the arc. Sanders for three off the front of the rim, rolls out. Stockton will let it roll out. It'll be Osprey's ball. Just about three and a half minutes into the first, uh, into the first half. Seven to five lead for Stockton. Stockton as a team has scored three of their last four baskets. Ball swung around by the Ospreys up top. Shot fake, driving in, finds Niemeke underneath. He couldn't get the layup to go, and Carney brings down the board. Heck of a move there to get it inside, but the Profs read it perfectly, got the ball right back. Carney from three, no good, and the Profs have still yet to hit from three-point land. Three-pointer from Flanders, got it. Can't leave that man wide open by on the arc because he will knock it down. That's exactly what he just did. Dickerson trying to get points on the other end. Fouled as he goes towards the hoop. See if they give him a shooting foul. And they will. So, or no, they won't. Looked like Dickerson was going to the free throw line, but instead it's going to be an inbound pass from Jerry Price. Pardon me. Price, looking for somebody to inbound it to. Gives it to Bob, Price gets it back. Step back, elects not to go for the shot. Sanders now, one on one. Malik Sanders kicks it out, Carney for three, no good. Rebound, Dickerson can't get there. Brought down and coming away with it is Jordan Taylor. Taylor kicks it out for three, got it. DJ Campbell, the freshman out of Island, New Jersey, puts Stockton up by eight. Carney backing down his defender, hook shot off the glass and in. Get down there, you want to get easy buckets the way to do it, get high percentage buckets. That one's right there, put it up, put it in, Austin Carney. Baker driving in, kicks it out, and he's going to get called for a travel. So a turnover on the Ospreys. Right now, Joe, Prost getting killed by the long ball. See Jerry Price going in. Carney goes one way, finds another. An easy kiss off the glass. Six-point deficit for Rowan. Ryan Legler checks into the game along with Matt Green gets the Almost gets the bucket to go off the glass. It looked like he was going to get the friendly roll, but just doesn't go in for Green. Now Taylor up to Campbell. Campbell driving in, right-handed, leaves it underneath. Floater, and it's good. Steve Faraby back into the game and makes an impact right away. Green to Dickerson, drives baseline, spin move off the glass and in. Athletic play from the sophomore guard. And then a big dunk from Farabee. Good pass underneath from Jordan Taylor. He just wasted a timeout a couple of minutes ago to, to stop and run. I wouldn't say use it, but I feel like you have to. This is a huge run here. And Farabee misses the uncontested layup and the props catch a break as it was a bad turnover once again by Rowan. And you saw Coach Crispin throw his hands up in the air and turn around. Profs got a little lucky because they missed it, but. Green. Driving in, off the glass, no good. Rebound brought down by Faraby. Taylor streaking up the court, has Campbell in the corner, and he just missed him. 
Goffs got away with one once again. Or they get help once again off of a, a mistake made by the Ospreys. So Rowan needs to slow the pace down. I think they're hurrying a little bit too much. They still have plenty of time in the whole entire game, not even just in the quarter, but the whole entire game. And Rowan just needs to sell down, get the right shots exactly like that one. O'Leary finds Ba underneath for the easy layup. A six point deficit is what it's back to for Rowan. Check into the game for the Ospreys was Jordan Williams at the last stoppage. O'Leary, a nice steal on the defensive side of things. Dickerson driving up the court. Euro step, can't get the layup to go. Rebound by Williams. Campbell kicked out. Three pointer, good. No foul called, but Keon Flanders hits another one from downtown. Green tries to answer off the front of the rim, no good. Campbell, behind the back dribble, up the court, and he'll slow things down and leave it off for Flanders. And Flanders call for the travel. Right now, anything that has to do with a turnover by Stockton, Rowan needs to, no matter what, get to the other end and convert. They're taking away potential points. You get the points right back on your side if you're able to cash in. But again, slow things down. A lot of tired bodies out there already. Right, be, right after that turnover or after that travel, Connor Dickerson had his hands and uh, had on it, had his hands on his knees, bent over. Legler from downtown. Finally, the props hit from deep. It's 20 to 14. Stockton still with the lead. Driving in, kicking it out. Campbell from deep, off the back of the rim, rebound. Loose ball rolling, can they save it? And who's it go out off of? They're gonna give the ball to the props. Matt Green will look to inbound, now checking in for Rowan, making his first appearance of the night. Rob Gordon, freshman out of Laurel, Maryland, and he'll bring the ball up the court for Rowan. O'Leary, right-handed dribble drive off the glass, no good. Rebound brought down by Farabee. Up the court, it's Flanders. Flanders guarded by Pantovic and swatted away by Marco Pantovic. Rolling around is the ball. Pantovic couldn't quite corral it. It will go out of bounds and stay with the Ospreys. Stocked in the inbound. They do so as the ball makes its way to Luciano Lubrano. Jordan Taylor driving in, and he was fouled before the shot. It's like a reach-in foul from behind. It's called on Matt Green. Matt Green's first foul, Rowan's first foul as a team. Stockton with two team fouls, and we're almost halfway through the first half. Underneath to Niemeke. Taylor, left-handed dribble, pulls up, jumper off the back of the rim, no good, and Gordon streaking up the court. Rob Gordon tries to get around, layup, and he got it! Rob Gordon flexing the muscles as he walks back to dap up his teammates. He'll go to the line to try and convert the N1 opportunity. How about that from the freshman? If Gordon is able to convert the three-point play, it'll be a three-point deficit for Rowan. And another look at it as Gordon able to draw the contact from Flanders. Couldn't knock down the free throw, so it still stays a four-point game. Layup off the glass and in. Jonathan Ozora. O'Leary. Finds Legler. Green. Driving in, spin move. Can't get the layup to go as it was stripped, but he's able to get it back. O'Leary underneath, fouled, going up for the shot. Pantovich got the putback. It won't count. O'Leary will go to the line for two. You know, one of the things that we have to look out for are not, not only the starters, 
but the bench presence too. Last game for Stockton. They had 45 bench points. Big key was Campbell, 17 points and seven rebounds off the bench in the 76-74 win over Ramapo. Free throw knocked down by O'Leary. It's a four point game. Layup, contested, he's fouled. That's Dawkins. And he'll go to the line and shoot a pair. Taking a look at head coach Joe Crispin, he's talking to Matt Green over on the sideline. Speaking of Crispin, we'll do the coaching matchup tonight. Of course, for the props, head coach Joe Crispin in his fourth season as the props head coach, 55 and 33. Record in 88 games throughout the first three seasons, of course. Led the props to their first NCAA appearance since 2000 last year, and they got a win in the first game over Emerson College here at home. Unfortunately, losing in the second round and getting bounced out of the tournament. Katie and Dawkins at the free throw line. Knocks down both, and it's back to six points. The lead for the Ospreys. On the other end of things for the Ospreys, Scott Bittner, fourth season as the head coach for Stockton, 48-38 record in 86 games. The three ball, no good, rebound brought down by Gordon. Gordon gets it back, Green fakes the three in the corner. Long cross court pass, Legler, left handed dribble, pass underneath, stolen away by Williams. Long pass intercepted by Gordon. Gordon up the court, pass underneath, and he found his man, he got it to go, it's O'Leary. Great acceleration there from Gordon to get it up to O'Leary and a pass inside, very dangerous. Able to get the bucket to go. Loose ball, Matt Green able to come away with it, props down by four. Legler crosses half court. Cross court pass, Gordon from the RU. Off the rim, no good, rebound. Brought down by Dawkins. Asoro, fouled going up for the shot. Looks like he'll go to the line for two. So Zorro, sophomore forward out of Ewing, New Jersey. Can't knock down the first free throw. Check into the game for the props, Austin Carney and Jonathan Hevelo. Exiting will be Matt Green and Jerry Price will also enter. Props have six on the floor. It appears Marco Pantovic didn't get the message he was coming out. Didn't want to come now out. we'll sit down. <laughs> You're in there, you don't want to come out. Of course not. Can't blame the man. And another free throw missed. Legler up the court, slows it down, waits for some support. Osoro missed both free throws on the other end, so a four point game, 24 to 20. Ospreys with the lead, Price driving in, layup, off the rim, no good, rebound, put back, brought down again. Hevelo can't get it. Looks like both Hevelo and Carney were fighting for that rebound. It's also, it's a blessing, but it's also a curse when you have Two guys who you know want to be aggressive with the ball and get rebounds took it right away from Carney. Is Carney could have you know possibly had a, a better look at the bucket than Hevelo did. Jerry Price whistled on that last foul. Coach Crispin wanted an explanation on the sideline. Ball inbounded to Taylor. Hands it off to Lubrano. Three pointer from Campbell. Got it. Fade away three-pointer, DJ Campbell. Six points on the night, back-to-back -back threes from him. Got to get on that three-point arc. Made five of seven now for the Ospreys. Got to collapse when they get outside. Let them have the inside, or at least make it, you know, really contest it. But when they step out to that three-point arc, you got to get there. Props try and steal it away. Loose ball, Lubrano fights for it back. Williams underneath, off the glass. 
rolling around and doesn't drop in. That ball hung up there for an eternity and now Campbell with the floater too easy. Well, Joe, you mentioned DJ Campbell last game was the spark for the Ospreys offense and tonight he's already got eight points. Yeah, that's where it's gonna be the, you know, not only the starters, but uh, you know, also the bench too. That's exactly why this, you know, the Ospreys are, are three games above 500 and three and zero in the conference. It's also why they are, they're riding a three game winning streak. It's Taylor, guarded by Dickerson. Switches off, finds Campbell. Jerry Price all over Campbell. Campbell driving in, loses control of the ball, able to regain. Lubrano layup, no good. They're going to call a blocking foul on Dickerson underneath. He thought he earned the charge. So Luciano Lubrano heads to the free throw line for two free throws. Shame, too, because Connor Dickerson usually very good at you know realizing when to you know take the charge or when to you know really make them you know get it to the line and obviously when you're that close no matter what you want to make them earn it at the line but I think he was still looking for the charge though well Dickerson has been known to draw charges not afraid to get his body in front of the contact Malik Sanders back into the game for Rowan Ball swung across, Hevelo from the corner, off the rim, rebound brought down by Jordan Taylor. I also think too, you know, we're still early on in the season. I think having Jonathan Hevelo out there with the starters, you know, obviously bobbing the, you know, the, the loan out there that's not on the court, I think still testing different lineups out is going to be key you know, early on in this young season. Hevelo, long two, no good. Profs, scoreless in the last minute, 40. Lubrano wide open from three, no good. Williams with the rebound, puts it back up off the glass, got it. Profs one for seven in their last seven field goal attempts and one for 10 from three tonight. Not gonna get it done. They trail 10. And pass stolen away by Tariq Baker. Lubrano up the court, finds Baker driving in, layup off the glass, no good, brought down by Dickerson. Going back to that pass cross, you know, cross court, I think when you're up 10 like Stockton is, you can make those passes, and if it's turned over, oh well, but when you're down 10, you gotta easily get to the court, you gotta easily get around the court, you gotta work around the court, get around that three point arc if you want it to swing it over to you know from the far side near or vice versa. Prof started off with some very nice ball movement to begin the game. They've since struggled and turned the ball over a few times. Jerry Price heads to the line for two free throws. He's one for six tonight from the field, and he misses his first free throw. Well, we know free throw shooting, not the Prof strong suit on the year. As a team, free throw percentage at 65.3%. That's eighth best in the end, Jack out of 10 teams. Yeah, ninth best are, are, is Stockton. So I think both teams, no matter what, after the second miss, got to start making them because those points are going are gonna to haunt you at the, at the end of the game if you don't, you know, you know don't, don't, don't start making them. Gamble couldn't get it to go. Price brings it up to court for the profs, and that was kind of the story of NJCU. Think about all the points the profs left on the board from the free throw line. They may have walked away with a victory here at home in their last contest on the seventh. DJ Campbell steals it away, driving down the court, got the layup to go. Price was no match with the transition defense and a timeout called on the floor by head coach Joe Crispin. It's gonna be a full timeout on the floor. So we're gonna take a quick step off, be right back here with more Prost Basketball on RoanAthletics.com. And one word, if I had to describe trifecta therapeutics, if I had to describe trifecta in one word, it would be empower. The purpose of trifecta therapeutics would be to uh, empower the athletic community. I just really like the population of having active individuals and people who really want to get back, doing whatever they could to get back and want to be part of that process. We want them to feel like this is an environment where they belong and where they're going to get the best possible care. 
this is a professional environment. They're all working with their doctor, physical therapy, but I want them to be comfortable and fun. Not only do we want to rehab you from your injuries, we want to get you to an optimal place as an athlete. My clients are also there. They're active, they're hungry, they all want to get back to something. They're focused and they're dedicated. That's a perfect combination. If you really want to be challenged and you know, get to your goals faster, that's, that's why I would say come here. And welcome back into Rhone Athletics' coverage of Profs Men's Basketball. Coming out of the timeout, Profs trail by 12, 34 to 22. And out of that timeout, we're going to send it down to our silent reporter, Kayla Santiago. Once again, Kayla, what Coach Joe Crispin have to say? Crispin saying that it's pretty simple. They're outworking us. They're out hustling us. We're not fast enough, and we're trying to do too much. All we need to do is hustle and get down the floor like we have been able to all season. He wants his guys to pick it up and start playing hard. Back to you, Mark. Thanks, Kayla. And perfect message, Joe, from head coach Joe Crispin. Basically, the effort just isn't there right now. We're not doing what we've been doing all year, and that's why we're down by 12. I think the effort for the most part is it's just getting good shots getting open shots that's what's going to be the key i think they're taking a little bit you know too much of risks like we saw a couple possessions ago when they tried to get it from one side of the court to the other gotta swing it around you can't you can't be taking a risk when you're when you're down at that point it was 10 but now you're down 12 and you gotta also make your free throws at the line uh, Jerry Price just missed another one. Let's see if he can convert this one. And he finally gets one to go. One for four from the line tonight after making that. I think also the frustration has to start, you know, really to, to set in for this props team. In, you know, not having buckets go through. The free throw is not going. But you, you just got to completely forget about it. You have to take one possession at a time. If you miss, go back, play defense. Yeah, you, you have another possession. More than likely, you're guaranteed another possession. Well, I think the frustration's mounted for the Profs. One for 10 from beyond the arc tonight. And when you can't get it going from beyond the arc, you tend to force some shots underneath that are getting blocked away. And finally, Jerry Price knocks down a three-pointer, making up for those three points he left on the board with those three missed free throws. Eight-point lead for the Ospreys. Double team. Ball swung across, Tariq Baker from the corner. Got it. That was a great collapse there by Connor Dickerson, but with just a hair behind and couldn't fully get a, a block attempt or at least a hand in the face of, uh, of the shooter. That's one of those plays right there where Jerry Price might have done a little bit too much. A little bit longer of a three point, bang. It's a nice three right there. The last play where now Price is at the free throw line. So he earned himself a trip because the props are in the bonus. But he had a wide open Malik Sanders in the corner. He was triple teamed in the paint and still tried to take it. Able to knock down the first of the one and one. So he's going to get a second opportunity from the line. 37-27. Stocked in the lead over the props. 4.33 left to go here in the first half. And Price knocks down another. Price after starting the game, you know, really one for four at the line, made things up now, three of six. So all you want to do is just, just keep getting better. You're going to be sent to the line a lot just because he, he's so small. He's so, he can get around defenders with ease, and they, they can't really stop him unless they foul him. Well, actually, that wasn't a foul. It was a jump ball, but... You know, more than likely you're going to get fouled just because you're you're so tough to stop in the paint. So if you get if you're just going to keep getting a lot, you got to start improving. Profs need to improve in a few different areas. So far tonight, they trail by 11. Jordan Taylor brings the ball up the court for the Ospreys. They cross half court. Taylor gets it back from Williams in the corner to Baker. Got it. You just can't leave these Ospreys open. They will shoot the lights out. Seven for 11 from beyond the arc at 63 and a half percent. Just, it's raining tonight here in Esby. Ba swings it out. Legler to O'Leary. O'Leary 
Carney from the free throw line just can't get it to go. Couldn't get the friendly bounce. Unlucky as that shot looked like it was going to be good. But now Jordan Taylor driving in. He's got two men on his back. Kicks it out. Swung across to Campbell with a hand in his face. Off the rim. No good. Carney. Got it. Another three-pointer for the props this time, courtesy of Austin Carney, an 11-point deficit. Yeah, his first three-pointer netting through, six points for the big man. You're going to want to get him involved in the offense as much as you can. Long three from Jordan Taylor, no good. A rebound rolls out of bounds. Tariq Baker just couldn't reach for it. Deontay Bog. Looked like he was going to be subbed out, but now we have a timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout on the floor. Saw Austin Carney there bang down that shot on the replay. and I think that's what you want to get him going. Again, I, I, I preached it at the beginning of the game. Let him get hot from beyond the arc. Build up his confidence because the last couple of games and, you know, from last season into this season, where he likes to shoot it. If he feels comfortable by shooting it beyond the arc, then let's do it. Certainly so, and you see the head-to-head -head so far, the leading scores for both teams. DJ Campbell for the Ospreys with 10 points. Jerry Price with eight for Rowan Campbell. Two for three from beyond the arc. Jerry Price has been the line and got a majority of his points from the free throw line, or a little bit less than half, excuse me. And we're going to take a second to send it courtside. Kayla Santiago with an update out of the timeout. Coach Crispin saying, don't freak out on defense. Move your feet. Don't run. Don't foul. Just play solid defense. We know they're a good three-point shooting team, so do your best to close out. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kayla. Has a little hook shot coming off the hands of Tariq Baker. Got it to go. Legler. Deep three, in and out. Rebound, falls to Jordan Taylor. Although that's it was a deep three, as you said, and, and you know, it might be like, wow, why'd you take that? Legler can get those home. I think it was a good shot, just, just literally just rimmed out. Stockton dominating on the rebounds. 28 rebounds for Stockton after that sequence compared to the profs, 17. Legler holds the ball up. Carney sets the screen. Legler behind the back dribble. Out to Green. Green called for a walk. I think the props need to start spacing out the floor more. You're running into problems where you know, at that point wasn't a rebound, but you know, guys are three, you know, three players are down low rebounding. Need to, you know let the man go after the ball and then go down the court on the offensive side. Maybe try an isolation. Get through, just take a defender one-on-one -on -one and see if something happens. You know, something might open up. You got to start spacing the floor just a little bit. Lubrano out to Farabee. He drives in, loose ball, poked away, gotten by Dawkins. Dawkins double team, but now it's just green on him. O'Leary thought about helping for a second, backed up underneath, swatted away by Deontay Ba. And now a whistle on the play. Connor Dickerson had to be helped up off the floor. A little frustrated at that too after you know, knowing that Deontay Ba had a clean block. Going in, goes the switch, get out of here. But it was Dickerson who committed the foul. That'll bring Othniel Niamekia to the line. Can't convert the first free throw attempt. A 44 to 31 lead for the Ospreys. A minute 20 left to go in the first half. Niamekia misses the second as well. Gordon has green. Legler 
Step back three, got it. Big three from Ryan Legler. And the Prowse only down by 10. Whistle blown, looks to be a foul called on Rowan. It's on Ryan Legler. It's his first foul, team seventh. Stockton's in the bonus, so it'll be a one and one opportunity for Luciano Lubrano. You'll see Legler think about going in. That fadeaway makes it so tough on the defense to, to try to defend it. The fade no way, it, it just, there's nothing that the defense can do, but the question is, are you gonna make it? That's the shot for Legler every single time. It reminds me a little bit of like a LeBron James' shot, because when LeBron takes it, he leans back just a little bit. That's why it makes it so tough for you know players in the NBA to really you know get a block on him. The arc of the shot, yeah, fairly high as well. Yep. So that makes it even harder to get the block on as both free throws knocked down by Lubrano. Twelve point lead for Stockton. Gordon swings it. Legler pulls up. Can't get that one to go. Rebound. Legler was fighting for it. Goes out of bounds off Farabee as he tried to beat Legler to the ball. Good hustle play from Ryan Legler. Exactly. Realizing, okay, I didn't make the shot. Let's get it back, though. Goes at it hard. Didn't stop. It's green from the corner. There's a whistle. Didn't call a travel. Appears to be a foul off the ball. It's Deontay Ba. Call for an off the ball foul. And Stockton will get possession. 27.8 on the clock. Shot clock is unplugged. And Stockton will most likely hold the ball for the last shot of the first half. Up by 12. Yeah, and they're looking to, you know, sink it. They want to make sure that they get a good shot. And, uh, Good feeling going into half, dominating Rowan on, the, on their home court. Stockton right now has had a handle on things from the jump as they're up 46-34. Flanders hold his, holds the ball up. Six seconds on the clock, five seconds. Flanders driving in off the glass, got it as time expires. Keon Flanders leads the way to the locker room and Stockton running out of the gym like they just stole something from the props and right now they have a 14 point lead. And Esby is silent, taking a little bit of contact, going right up, oh, not an easy thing to do, to go right over the arms of Ba. And 48 to 34 is the score. As we head to halftime right now, leading scorer for the profs, Jerry Price with eight points. On the other end, it's been DJ Campbell. He has 12, and Keon Flanders also adding 11 after that buzzer beater to end the first half. And Joe, we talked about the profs have been struggling on offense, but also been struggling getting back on defense. Coach Christmas is going to have a lot to say to the boys in the locker room. Yeah, and that's the thing. So you, you know, going into half, head coach Joe Christmas does a fantastic job of adjustments, but... There's gonna have to be a lot of adjustments, uh, unfortunately. So you have, uh, on the defensive side, making sure you close out on the three-point attempts. On the offensive side, I think just slowing things down would be the, is the main thing. Find a shot, and, and, and that's, that's it. You know, fi find a good shot, take it, sink it. Profs have quite a few things to improve on over the halftime break as they trail 14 heading in to the end of the first half. So we'll be back here in about 14 minutes or so, bring you second half action between the Running University Profs and the Stockton University Ospreys. Once again, Stockton up 48 to 34, up by 14 points. We head into halftime. We'll be back right here on RoanAthletics.com in a few. What's black and white and red all over? Black and white and red all over. Black and white, red all over. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I would say a zebra. A panda with a red hat. That's a tough one. Black and white, red all over. I have no idea. A nun falling down the stairs. <laughs> 
Um, I don't know. What is black and white and red all over? Newspaper. Newspaper. Uh, uh, a book? Uh, yeah, I bet. A book? What's black and white and red all over? I know this answer. It's it's a newspaper. One word if I had to describe trifecta therapeutics. If I had to describe trifecta in one word, it would be power. The purpose of trifecta therapeutics would be to uh, empower the athletic community. I just really like the population of having active individuals and people who really want to get back, doing whatever they could to get back and want to be part of that process. We want them to feel like this is an environment where they belong and where they're going to get the best possible care. This is a professional environment. They're all working with their doctor, physical therapy, but I want them to be comfortable and fun. Not only do we want to rehab you from your injuries, we want to get you to an optimal place as an athlete. My clients are also there. They're active, they're hungry, they all want to get back to something. They're focused and they're dedicated. That's a perfect combination. If you really want to be challenged and you know, get to your goals faster, that's, that's why I would say come here. Diving in college taught me to strive and be the best athlete I can be, but also the best student I can be. My coaches always made sure that the student comes first because not everyone going to become a professional athlete. So they make sure that we will do great in academic. I knew that would only open the door to my future and I'm really excited to start my dream program for physical therapy. My favorite emoji is the little, uh, the flirt face, like the, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> um, the smile. Oh, definitely the, the, the red one with the tongue tick, the tongue, <laughs> the tongue sticking out. It's like, what if it's a fire emoji? <laughs> I'll just point to my hair. Um, you know, like the kissy face, but it's not actually going to kiss. It's just like that one. Favorite emoji, and you have to make the face. Uh, it's the the sneezing one. I like the sneezing. One. I can't do it. It's the upside down emoji. I'm not turning upside down. So the little smirk, like the um, that one. <laughs> Probably the hard eyes, but I can't really make that. <laughs> See, I like I like the, like the one where the, you got the glasses on, but I don't got glasses to show it. Angry emoji. I just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But I also made me realize that I have a lot of career goals. You're there to get a full college experience. Not only participate in your sport, but participate in things outside of that. And it's all about growing as a person. My coaches have helped me with figuring out who I really am. Their lives are dedicated for us to succeed. What would be the worst of buy one, get one free sale of all time? Um, buy one, get one free sale. Ha <laughs> that's tough. Oh, that's a good question. Oh my gosh. Uh, egg rolls. Where's buy one, get one free sale? A car. I mean, I'd say cat, like like a like a kitten. I, I hate cats, so I, I ain't buying one. Um, I guess clothes. I don't know, col coloring books at Barnes and Noble. Buy one, get one, uh, insurance for life. Uh, gum. Buying Chick-fil-A on Sunday. A 
coffin. <laughs> <laughs> Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. If animals could talk, which animal would be the rudest? Probably cats. Cats are the worst. I don't know, maybe like a raccoon? Because they, I don't know, aren't they known for like stealing stuff? They go and they just like run around and run off of it? Um, probably a hyena. Uh, llamas. Giraffe. I feel like they sassy. <laughs> Porcupine. Porcupine. <laughs> if animals could talk, which animal would be the rudest? Oh. Cat. Probably a donkey. I don't think they. I don't think they'd be very. Yeah. I don't know. Porcupine. Probably a raccoon. <laughs> the rudest animal would probably be a dinosaur. Just because they're big, they can do whatever they want. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person. Competing at a Division III level created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. How old is Coach Crispin? 42? I don't know. I would probably say around 40 or 50. Man, he probably uh, 45, almost 50. I think he's 40. 40. He's uh, 39 or 40. 40? 38? How old is Coach Crispin? 40. 40. 25. How old? 35. Oh. Uh, I, I'd say like 40. Um, 40 or 41. How old is Coach Crispin? Like 40, 41. 480 months. <laughs> I learned a lot of valuable lessons playing college football. I never thought about the health benefits of exercise until I actually started to talk to coaches in college. It's not only just for performance, it's for life. My coaches instilled the importance of well-being, not only building up strength, mental health, getting enough sleep, eating properly, it's all what it is to be healthy. I decided that I want to go on a personal trainer and share my knowledge that I obtained in college about physical and mental well-being. And which teammate would win in an eating competition? <laughs> oh, shit. Eating competition? Matt Green. <laughs> I'll say Maddie. Me. Not even close. Oh, have a low. John, have a low. That's easy. Eating competition. Ryan O'Leary. <laughs> oh, I say Travis. Travis Hunt. Probably me. And I eat a lot. There are over 480,000 college athletes. Only 2% will go pro. That means over 470,000 will not get a shoe contract. No autographs. No private jets. No fan clubs. No Hall of Fame inductions. 
Instead, they will walk away with something much more valuable. And welcome back in to Roan Athletics coverage of Profs Men's Basketball. Right now, the Roan University Profs trailing the visiting Stockton University Ossers by a score of 48 to 34, a 14 point advantage for Stockton. And right now, look at the head to head leading score for both teams. DJ Campbell paces the Ospreys 12 points with five for 10 shooting from the field, including two three pointers. Meanwhile, Jerry Price, eight points, two for seven from the field, three for six from the charity stripe. And he's also knocked down one three pointer. And once again, I'm Mark Etchitelli alongside my broadcast partner, Joe Stauffenberg, as we're trying to get you guys set for second half action between the Rowan University Props and the Stockton University Ospreys. And Joe, right now the Profs, they're not doing too bad in tonight's game, but the one thing they're struggling with is trying to get open looks, and Stockton is rotating to perfection. Especially that three-point ball. 28% for Rowan and almost 54% for the Ospreys. So with that three ball, you gotta, you gotta have it work. And with that being said, we're gonna send it quickly to the sideline. Kayla Santiago standing by with Props head coach, Joe Crispin. Coach, you said in the beginning of this game that you know this Ospreys team is a good three-point shooting team. How can your team on defense find other ways to lock them down? Well, I, probably four of their threes I didn't mind. Uh, they were taken quickly, but we just didn't embrace the pace the way I, I think we should be, and that was a big frustration for me. I, we're fine getting the game fast, but we didn't look fine getting the game fast. And what adjustments do you want to see coming out of the gate in the second half? I want us to see be aggressive. I, and that's offensively and defensively. The mentality, um, physically, on the rebounding, you know, attacking the basket. Like, we weren't the aggressor in the first half. So we'll see what happens in the second. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Back to you guys. And head coach Joe Crispin, obviously, as he said there, upset with the Profs pace to play because he knows this team likes to play fast pace. It's what the Profs do best, but right now they're just flat out being outplayed by the Stockton Ospreys. Yeah, and they just want it more. Um, I think that's going to be the key who wants it more in the second half. Uh, the, the effort needs to be there, and just, just staying aggressive, I think, the, is exactly right. You want to be the team that's dominant. You want to be the one to say, Yep, we just scored that bucket. We're gonna go get another one. We're gonna go, to go, go get another one. And confidence is the key too. Keep that confidence level up no matter what. No matter where you're shooting from, you gotta think, I'm gonna make this. Well, there's no reason this Profs team shouldn't be confident. There's a team full of talented players. They have a good balance of shooters as well as guys that can get rebounds and drive in towards the basket. And right now, things just aren't necessarily clicking. They're not knocking down three-pointers at the rate we're used to seeing them. Just four for 14 from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, the Ospreys are better than them with seven for 14 from three-point land. And the Ospreys, here's the big difference. Overall field goal percentage, Ospreys shooting about 50% from the field. Props, meanwhile, shooting around 32. So a big gap, an 18 percentage gap in field goal percentage between the two teams. And it shows on the scoreboard with a 14-point lead for the Ospreys. Uh, I think again that's just getting opening looks when you have the, the Ospreys who you know, swung things around found the open man especially from that three point arc it's what's the key so now Rowan's got to be the aggressor be the aggressor and also find the open looks sometimes you're also going to have to take a you know take a shot when you look at you know the you know when, when it's covered or when you're covered, Ryan Legler does a tremendous job of not really letting defense phase him. So when the hand's in his face, that's really when he shoots so well. Well, Profs will start the second half with the possession of the ball. Austin Carney from the RU underneath to Deontay Ba. It's actually Malik Sanders trying to back down his man. Couldn't get it to go. And Niemeke, a little bit of frustration as he slams the ball against the court. He stepped out of bounds when he brought down the rebound. Didn't notice. The bench also... <laughs> let them have it i think uh it's also a big help that you know rowan having this home court advantage at least for this game just that you know have the the home crowd to get into it a few buckets go through i i, I think it, it's a scary thing to other teams when this place starts to rock and the thing about sb gymnasium is it's so tightly packed 
You, yes. know, you go to some other courts, the Anjak, for instance, you go to Stockton's court, very nice floor, very nice court, but it's in a gigantic-sized gymnasium where the court maybe takes up half of the actual room that it's in, and the other half is just completely some rec center courts, and the stands are further away from the court than they are here. When you're here in Esby, the fans are right on top of you, and if Rowan gets going, they will let you hear it. Especially now that Rowan's or Stockton is shooting on the right side where you know, they got the fan section right behind the bucket, always crucial. Saw some former Rowan players shooting over there. The kids section as well. They like to let the, the, uh, the opponent's team, the opponent opposing team uh, have it every now and then. Uh, Jerry Price fadeaway jumper, couldn't get it to go. Ball in the corner, driving in, layup, contested, got it to go, it's Keon Flanders. Dickerson couldn't get the jumper to go. Rebound brought down by Lubrano. Up the court comes Dawkins. Left-handed dribble underneath to Niemekie. Holds it shot. And they say he's fouled. See here going up the court. Pushing quickly. Driving baseline. Great defense there by Baba. Just even a, a better play there from Flanders. We've seen a lot of the time that Boz right in the middle of, of everything in the paint and those high floating shots, they're, they're just going right over the fingertips of Deontay. And it's just, there's nothing, there's just nothing that, that Ba can do. You could say, oh, he can just be a little, little taller, but man's <laughs> already 6'9". You wish you could say he could be a little bit taller. Yeah. I'm sure both of us wish we were at least half of Deontay Boss height as Austin Carney couldn't hit a three. And it's brought down by Farabee. Dawkins with the ball for the Ospreys. He gives it off to Flanders. Flanders kicks it out, Lubrano fakes the three, now finds his man, and Dawkins from downtown, no good. And Niemekie pulls down the board. Three-pointer from Flanders, no good. And Diggerson brings down the rebound, whistle on the play. Othniel Niemekie whistled for the foul. His second, Ryan Legler comes into the game for the props. Connor Diggerson will exit and take a seat. Jerry Price will bring the ball up the court for Rowan. Profs trail now by 18 points. Step back three from Price, got it. Get him going. He's your leading scorer on the team. He's got to start taking over. Although, you know, this is his first year here at Rowan, he's got to say, look, I, I, I need to you know, start stepping up. He needs to take charge of this team. Jerry Price. A trans, senior transfer, he's played at a high level before transferring to Rowan, and Niemekie gets the layup to go reverse style. Sanders from the corner, got it! How about a sweet stroke from the other transfer, Malik Sanders? Yeah, and, and with going back to Price, although he didn't shoot it, he helped out with a nice assist there. So all you got to do is just be that, be that team leader, find the open man, just like he did there with Sanders. Sanders pulls up from the RU, knocks it down. And Stockton calls a timeout. Head coach Scott Bittner's seen enough. He doesn't want to see Sanders or the props heat up as the deficit goes from 18 to 11, just like that. Well, a couple three-pointers like that swings the momentum. First it was Price, that step back three, and then two straight threes from Malik Sanders. And that's exactly how you get it. Malik Sanders knocking down back-to-back -back three pointers. You just had a feeling when he was bringing the ball up the court in transition, he was going to pull up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and especially, you know, if he makes one, make another, 
Let's get another one after that. And I'd say keep feeding him. Keep feeding Malik Sanders. We'll send it courtside with our sideline reporter, Kayla Santiago. Kayla, what's the update on the props? Coach Christman said, I don't care if we lose by 30. That's my fault. But what your fault is is not being aggressive on the court. He said that transition right there, I saw a little life out of you guys. Keep that up. Let's get back in this thing. Back to you, Mark. Thanks, Kayla. Sanders steals it, gets a three, can't get it to go. But a little bit of a heat check there yeah. from Malik Sanders. I don't think his feet were really set to. I think he just wanted to get it right away. And Faraby whistled for the walk. Jerry Price driving in, kicks it out. Three from the corner. It's green. Got it. Matt Green getting in on the party and the lead for the Ospreys dwindles down to eight. Last two minutes for the Pross, a 12-2 run. Hand in his face, no good is the shot from Campbell. He's been silent so far in the second half. Sanders fade away, no good. Loose ball off the Ospreys. Campbell couldn't corral it. Props will keep it in the offensive end. Turnover count, 14 for Stockton, nine for the Props. This play here, Price out the green. Don't leave him open. Right in front of the bench as well, his teammates letting him know about it. Malik Sanders driving in, layup, no good. Just couldn't get it over top the rim. Cut in at a bad angle, really couldn't do anything when he's that close. Tariq Baker from the corner, no good. Green gets the rebound. Legler was driving in, got fouled. Whistle's blown. Off certainly showing some signs of life here in the second half, only down by eight. Jerry Price, step back three. Air balls it, and Williams brings down the loose ball because it wasn't a rebound. Baker going up for the shot. He got fouled by Jerry Price. Unfortunately for Price, no too much speed to go in and then stop real quick to try to take the charge. It was a good move for him though. Only his second foul and just to be able to stop the play and to get a whistle. Campbell will inbound for the Ospreys. Gets it in underneath to Williams, kicks it out. Campbell from the corner, can't knock it down. Rebounded by Carney. Carney loses it on the pass to Legler. Layup from Flanders, got it and the foul. Oh, it's a charge. The referee changed it. Great set there. Now that is exactly how you do it. Textbook. Give away. Carney didn't mean to do that. Price said, hold up. Right outside the restricted area. Macarini even knew it too. He was given the sign before the referee. Price pointing down the court as if he got a first down. Three-pointer from Legler, no good. Brought down by Taylor. Fifty-four, forty-six. Ospreys with the lead. Flanders runs into O'Leary. Foul's going to be called on O'Leary. Props trying to bounce back tonight after they lost to NJCU at home just a few short days ago on the 7th by a score of 94 to 91. Meanwhile, Stockton trying to keep a three game win streak going. In their last game, they defeated Ramapo 76 to 74 at home. Taylor from the corner, got it. Stockton's showing why they're you know, one of the two teams above in the conference play. That shot good. 3 0 or Three wins, no losses on the year in the conference by 5-2 record. 
right up there with Montclair State. Tariq Baker scores the last basket in transition. Props took a little bit too long to get back. Price swings it to O'Leary. Hand it off to Sanders. Sanders fouled before the shot. So the Profs will keep possession. You see here going right in. Price plays some great defense, but finds an open man out in the floor. But on the other end, Leary going right in, up and under. Nice form there from O'Leary. Matt Green driving in, fakes the shot, then gets fouled. Now they're going to give him a shooting foul, and they will. He'll go to the line. Green, who's got three points tonight. A rebound, a steal. Make that four points. Green, who played hero, obviously, in the New Jersey City game with you know, the NJAC final last year. Hero with a three, with 7.8 left on the clock. Dawkins up the court, leaves it off for Niemekie. Can't get it to go. Props down by nine. Rob Gordon for Rowan, finds Green. Green. Off the glass, and it's in. Didn't even hit the glass. The veteran move there by Matt Green. You know, seeing what's through the, the lane. Ability to, to find it and finish with the contact. Flanders. Almost made Legler lose his balance, but he stays up on his feet. Flanders out in the corner. Baker got it. Profs committing a lot of men in the paint, and they're leaving the shooters out there in the corner. First it was Taylor, now it's Baker. Green knocks down a three and answers back. Answer right back, that's exactly what you need to do. Every possession, whatever they get, do it. You gotta stay with them, don't let, that, don't let it get out of hand. Flanders from three, and he knocks it down. Stockton is on fire tonight from beyond the arc. Ross cannot give them those easy looks. O'Leary driving in, layup, no good. In transition, it's Flanders. Layup, got it. And the Ospreys bench is going wild. 67-55, it's Green. Finds Legler. Swung out to Gordon for three, no good. And a great play by O'Leary. Just throws it off the shin of Niemekie, and they'll stay with the row and props. I don't know if he meant to really throw it off of Niemekie, but just to keep it in, just so happened that he was right there. But a heads up play in midair. Deciding, all right, I'm going to throw it back. Matt Green, he does it so well, just spotting up for three, letting the crowd know. And the answer right back with a no-look pass, and the three's good. Legler driving in, swatted away. Ryan Legler completely rejected at the rim. Campbell gets run into, and that one had to hurt. Fouls on Rob Gordon, his first. So far in this second half, Joe, Keon Flanders has absolutely taken over now with 18 points on the game. Seven for 10 from the field and four for six from beyond the arc. He's been dynamite. Travel called on DJ Campbell, turnover on the Ospreys. In the corner, O'Leary, no good. Loose ball brought down by Flanders. He's trapped in the corner. Loose ball, props come away with it. O'Leary wins it back. Three-pointer, no good. 
And the shooting woes continue for the props as the Ospreys kick it out to Taylor. And they just can't stop. Profs ice cold right now. Osprey's on fire, and it's a 15-point lead for Stockton. Sanders airballs a three, and it's just going from bad to worse for the Profs. Just great shooting night for him. Three ball, good. And he was running away with it even before it went down. The Ospreys just cannot stop. 11 for 23 from beyond the arc is Stockton, 48% from three-point land, and that's a huge reason why the Ospreys are up. Timeout was called by the profs, head coach Joe Crispin, talking things over with the team. Profs, by all means, they're still in this game, only down by 15. There's 10.52 left to go in the second half. 70 to 55 is the lead for Stockton. But Joe, at this rate, you can't be trading threes with the Ospreys because at the rate they're making them, it's going to get out of hand faster than you can handle it. Yeah, you're, you know, the, the way that they're shooting, you're, you're going to get burned. Rowan, the defense just has to, again, start collapsing. You need to cover that three point arc. Because that's, that's where they're getting the majority of the points from. Flanders has been killing the props. Four for six from beyond the arc. He's shooting 70%. 18 points for Flanders. Jerry Price with 11. He ended the half with eight, so he's only contributed three in this half, and he's still the props' leading scorer. And out of the timeout. Prof should have the ball. Stockton, meeting is adjourned over at the bench. Referee actually had to go over and tell him, I guess they're still trying to draw up some, some plays. Rowan scoreless in the last minute and 49 seconds. Faraby from the corner. You gotta be kidding me. Doesn't matter who it is for the Ospreys, every single one of them's knocking it down and it's an 18 point lead for Stockton. We've seen some you know, great shooting performances over the past couple of years. I've been here since, what, 2015? You know, start really covering Prost basketball since 2016. You've been here for a couple of years. We've seen some great performances here, and as well as you know, far from from Glassboro. But this is this is something else. Well, right now, we're even here for the the, you know, the, the 24 three pointer yeah. game, record breaking game for the Prost last year. They hit a program record: 24 three pointers in a single game, and today. Stockton only has knocked down 12, but at the clip they're going, it just feels like every shot's gonna drop as of late. Dawkins, out to Taylor from the corner. What do you know? And it drops. 21 points, the lead has ballooned for the Ospreys. Jerry Price tries to answer no good. DJ Campbell brings down the rebound. Dawkins driving in, lanes open, shot blocked away. Sanders finds Price. Price spin move layup. How about the athleticism from the point guard? Jerry Price. I'm talking about the way he gets inside, gets outside. Can't really stop him, and he uses his height as an advantage. It's a disadvantage sometimes, but he's able to, to hang in the air sometimes as well and, and make sure he gets around the blockers. Campbell from the corner, an air ball. That, felt, that has felt like the first miss all night. 
Uh, that just it really feels like has. a first miss. Dickerson with the ball for Rowan. Finds O'Leary. Three-pointer from Sanders, no good. Pantovich almost had the rebound, but Faraby just out-muscles him to the ball. How about Stockton? Six for seven from beyond the arc in their last seven attempts. Unreal. That doesn't oh, happen every day, folks. No. And Rowan just so happens to be on the other side of these long balls. Layup no good from Lubrano. Whistle on the play, some substitutions made. Seventy six fifty seven. Nineteen point lead for the Ospreys. Dawkins up top. Finds Flanders who swings it to Campbell. Baker. Underneath to Taylor, and Baker called for the offensive foul. It's his fourth. Time out on the floor, and it's Rowan. See if it's a full timeout or a 30-second. Timeout was actually called by the Ospreys. It's a full timeout, so we're going to take a quick step off. We'll be right back here on RowanAthletics.com. here in Esby Gymnasium in Glassboro, New Jersey on the campus of Rowan University. Profs trail the Ospreys by 19 points, 76 to 57. Stockton with the lead on the back of an amazing three-point shooting clinic put on by the Ospreys, six for seven in their last seven three-point attempts. It's all helps for that man. Keon Flanders, 18 points tonight and just the tremendous shooting continues. Both teams are shooting, uh, I think, uh, a pretty decent mark, but a lot of it's going to the edge of, of Stockton. Just the, the th three pointers keep going down. Walk called on Carney. Price tried to feed him underneath, but Carney was double teamed. Now, if you want to come back to win this game, you got to start now. You, th this is. You've got to start now. You don't want to leave it up to the last couple of minutes of the game and just keep fouling. It's got to start now after this possession. It's Taylor. Screen set by Williams. Pick and roll. Ball makes its way out to Dawkins. Leaves it off for Flanders. Driving in. Kicked out to Williams. Got it. The props don't start answering some of these buckets from Stockton. There's going to be no hope left. Still 7-16 left to go. Anything can happen. And Carney wasn't even looking. Green tried to find him. And Carney's telling Green he wanted him to shoot it. And you're getting open looks. You got to try and take the shot, but you can't really blame Matt Green. Rowan, one for seven in their last seven three-point attempts. So the confidence not really there from the props beyond the arc right now. You always got to be looking at the ball. Don't, you know, never turn away from the ball unless it's an inbound play, basically. And, you know, the, the center is just behind and just looking at each play. It's a walk there. Never turn your back on the ball. Travel called on Jordan Taylor. Turnover on the Ospreys. Matt Green inbounds to Jerry Price. Three-pointer from Price, no good. And boy, hasn't that been the story of the night from beyond the arc for Rowan. 
shooting 32%. Well, 50% well above the season average for the Ospreys. Good ball movement from the Ospreys. Campbell. Flanders underneath to Williams. In the post against Carney. Williams fakes the pass, tries to back down Carney. Finds his man in Dawkins. Layup no good. Rebound. Off Williams. Williams pleading his case. He's had it touch Carney last. Connor Dickerson subbed out of the game. Malik Sanders checks in. 78-57, 21-point lead for Stockton. About to have six minutes left to go in the second half. Layup, no good from Carney. Rebound brought down by Campbell. And now another shot knocked down. It's Williams. Green driving in, layup, got it to go, but there's a whistle on the play. All started with the turnover there, and the missed layup. Going right through. Williams, an easy layup. Matt Green at the free throw line. 12 points tonight, four for eight shooting with two rebounds. Knocks down the first. And only. Dawkins. Double teamed at half court. Flanders had an open three. Elects to pass off to Dawkins. Stockton would be smart just to try and kill as much clock as possible, being up 20 points. And it looks like that's what they're doing. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's what... Head coach Scott Bittner is, is looking at Flanders also, too, realizing it and stopping after he had a, an open three. Well, the Ospreys with a couple opportunities for some second chance points, but the ball did not hit the rim at all in that sequence. Therefore, the shot clock never reset. Legler from three, no good. Taylor cross court to Flanders, layup, got it. Doesn't get much easier than that, Flanders, a little bit of cherry picking, took off from half court as the rebound came down and Taylor saw him all the way, found him like a quarterback. Price driving in, layup gets fouled, he'll go to the line for two. Think if you're, you know, they're gonna, just let them have it up court. Just like you said with the cherry pick. Let them take it. Or just, just keep doing that if you're, you know, if you're stocked, just keep doing that. Price misses the free throw. Rowan's got to send somebody on him no matter what on the defense. Just stay in his back pocket. You don't have to, you know, stick them tight or anything. Just stay right there. Flanders up to court. Price was able to knock down the second. Dawkins to Jordan Taylor. Taylor holding it underneath to Williams. Nice dribble move and Williams with the footwork underneath. Gets the hook shot to go in the lead now at 23. Price layup no good trying to do it all. Fouls on Flanders. Price heads to the charity stripe. Got it to go. Damian Smith in for Ba. In his first minutes, and now being down a little bit more, you, you get to go deeper into your bench, see what you have. 
be crucial for later on in the season. Hopefully, you know, maybe a, a spark will pop up in Smith. Good ball movement by the Ospreys. Great job drilling out the clock right now. Up by 21, no need to rush for a basket. Knowing the way that Rowan can play too, they know that they can get back into this one. Taylor for three, no good. Rebound brought down. Legler, behind the back pass, finds Sanders. Sanders driving in, reverse layup, no good. And now whistle blown. Sanders rushing over there with Milo De Los Santos. Foul was called on Sanders. Excuse me, that was Damian Smith over there with Sanders. But foul still was called on Sanders. Timeout called. It's a full timeout. We'll take a quick step off. Be right back here from Esby Gymnasium after this. Football has taught me a lot throughout my life. It's definitely had a huge imprint on who I am as a person. Competing at a Division III level created that opportunity for me to go to college. Not only was I the first one in my family to graduate college, but I was really the first one to even go. Being the first one, I'm breaking that cycle, and, and now that I've graduated, I'm not sure what's the next step, but I know I have a lot of doors open. And a lot of those are open because I played football and ran track here at Otterbein. Back here, inside SB Gymnasium on the campus of Rowan University. Mark Epstein, alongside my broadcast partner, Joe Stauffenberg, and with 3.40 left to go in the second half, your Rowan University props down 21 points to the NJAC rival Stockton. The Ospreys up 84 to 63 behind a three-point shooting clinic that you have to see to believe. It, it, it's been a fantastic shooting barrage for Stockton. That's, that's really all you can say. And Rowan just can't uh, find a way to, to, to cover it. They have a lot of moving pieces and just find the, the, the open players and it's, it's just working. Stockton had a game plan and right now they're executing it to perfection. 335 left to go in the second half. Props trying to do whatever it takes to get the ball back. Campbell underneath, nice dribble move, swatted away. Gordon to Legler from three. No good, rebound. Hit the wire holding up the net, so it will be out of play. Appears that it will stay with the props. And now they're going to say Stockton starts with the ball. Taylor to inbound. Finds Dawkins in the corner. Spin move. He was guarded by Damian Smith, and that's who the foul's called on. I think now Rowan is in a little bit of desperation mode to say, all right, now we got to start trying to bomb home threes and you know, get as many points each possession as possible, but not the way because then on the defensive side, you double team, you leave somebody open and baskets like that happen. Williams gets the easy layup and the lead up to 23. Gordon from three, no good. It's just been one of those nights. Smith deflects it off of Flanders, and now Jordan Taylor underneath gets the and one. Osprey's largest lead of the night, 25 points with a chance to make it 26 if Jordan Taylor can knock down his free throw to convert the three-point play. 
Profs had one three-game losing streak last year. To be honest, it's, you know, you look back last season, it's the same exact stretch, or almost the same exact stretch. O'Leary knocks down a three-pointer. Profs finally able to get back on the board. They were scoreless for over two minutes. Loss against TCNJ, loss against New Jersey City, and a loss against Stockton. I'm not just saying this year, it happened last year too. O'Leary stole it away, was able to get the layup to go. Lead cut to 20. Campbell finds Flanders, under two minutes left to go. And at this point in the game, there's no way the Profs will start to foul and try and get possession from the free throw line. And with plays like that from Flanders, who's going to go to the line to convert an M1 opportunity, there's definitely no point in doing that. Now here come the reserves for both teams. Flanders, you see, great night. Eight for 11 shooting. He's got 20 points. A 21 with a made free throw here. Some substitutes for the Ospreys. Danny Moeller checks into the game as well as Milo De Los Santos. Pross also sending in some of the reserves. Greg Velaspoulos and Brian Thatcher enters as well. Also Travis Holland gets some minutes as well as John McCloskey. Damian Smith with the ball gets fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. He'll get two as Pross from the double bonus. Damian Smith, something interesting about him. I found this uh, on a uh, uh, Courier Post article back on the January 7th. He actually fractured his tibia and dislocated his kneecap in gym class his junior year in October of 2017 uh, you know, at his high school. And actually, it might be a little graphic, but a bone, a piece of the bone was protruding through his skin. That was his junior year, but this, his senior year averaged about 12 points a game in 24 games. And obviously, a big recovery for Damian Smith from Cherokee. Three-pointer from Smith goes in. Got the nice bounce. It went in and out, but stayed in. Up the court, Moeller in the corner. Driving in, holding onto it, and Moeller gets it back. Leaves it off for Campbell. Jordan Heck into the game for the Ospreys as well. Moeller tripped up, heading towards the basket. He'll go to the line for a one and one opportunity. Zaire Griffin checks into the game for the Ospreys. Moeller at the line. Senior guard out of Voorhees, New Jersey, went to Eastern High School. Misses the first free throw, rebounded by Heck. He puts up a shot, underhand, no good, rebound. Gets his own rebound. Swings the ball across. Moeller fakes the three, swings it to Heck. He knocks it down. Even the reserves yes. knocking down threes for the Ospreys, and it's a 21-point advantage. Under a minute to go. Shot no good. Rebound. Moeller brings it up the court. Spin move. Loses control of the ball. Thought a teammate was setting him a screen. McCloskey was going to pull up. Holds it up. Thatcher for three. In and out. Guys be gymnasium not... Having a, uh, a a big fan of the profs tonight, apparently. Like, that that's a good, that's a shot. That usually goes for Thatcher. He's open. We've seen it multiple times last year. This is really, a, like, first opportunity coming in, getting some quality minutes. De Los Santos with the ball at half court. Pass gets through, deflects, loose ball. 
Heck has Moeller. Spots up from three. Off the rim, no good. And Profs will dribble it out. That'll do it. Final buzzer sounds. Rowan loses by 21 points. They fall to NJAC rival Stockton University Ospreys. 93 to 72, your final score. Rowan falls to three and four on the year. One and three in NJAC play. Also, their losing streak extends to three games. Meanwhile, the Ospreys, six and two on the year. Three and oh, excuse me, now four and oh in the conference on a four game win streak. And there you see. Total point leaders for both teams. Keon Flanders finishes with 22. Jerry Price finishes with 16. How about Flanders' stat line? 9 for 12 from the field, 4 for 6 from 3. He was absolutely on fire tonight, and he's a big reason why the Ospreys came out with a 21-point victory. Yeah, you're absolutely right. 22 points, 3 rebounds, 3, rebound, three assists. It was just a tough night. It was a tough night for Rowan. Everything was falling for the Ospreys. You look at they shot the ball 29 times from beyond the arc. 14 of them went in, good for 48%. And, and normally, take a look at the, the, the season average, they're sixth in the NJAC at a 35% rate. That's a 13% that's a difference from the team average to tonight. Things fell for Stockton. Things didn't fall for Rowan. That's all you can really say. And certainly tonight's three-point performance from the Ospreys will help that average in the end, Jack, and on the season for three-point percentage per game. But with all that being said, that's going to do it for Rowan Athletics coverage of Profs Men Basketball. Once again, Profs fall to three and four. Stockton improves to six and two. The Ospreys a 21-point victory over your home team, the Rowan University Profs. For... My partner, Joe Stauffenberg. I'm Mark Etchley. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great night, everybody. Pross once again lose by 21, 93 to 72.